Well, not the best starts for our pole sitter, Mark Scave, getting tangled up on that first corner with Larry Perkins and paying the penalty across the grass, getting back in the field, but the car obviously not up to speed as the race progressed. The one man who was, I think, would have a bigger smile on his face is Tony Longfest. Fifth in that first heat, that was a great run. Yeah, it was. Mate, geez, it's so wild. Like, going into the first turn, I saw Scafey spear across in front of me onto the grass, and I'm turning, and the guys are just whacking me from behind. I nearly had whiplash the first two or three corners. Just amazing. Castro uh, Falcon seems to be improving with each race. Yeah, well, look, Yokohama are working very hard, and uh, we've got a better tyre package now. And listen, it's all about tyres. You can see how well the Bridgestone guys qualified, and how Yokohamas came good in the race. Keep hanging in there. Thank you. Well, plenty of action on the track. You can catch all the action on paper in the 1998 V8 Supercar TV Guide. All the rundown of the 98 Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. Six bucks on sale at Newsagent or your closest shell shop. We get ready for race two. Of course, Russell Engel will start from pole. John Bow, position two. Three is Larry Perkins. Four, Craig Lowndes. Mark Scope made a good recovery from that first corner incident. He's in sixth alongside Longhurst, Jason Bargwana and the Valvoline Commodore with Jason Bright, the old sparring partners alongside each other. These, of course, are the finishing positions of race one. Steve Johnson, nine, his father Dick in ten. Glenn Seaton back at 11 and John Faulkner, 12. Seaton's just made an engine change too, so he might be looking for some more speed this time around. Jones and Ellery back there, Mark Larkham in the minor 10 Ford and Terry Finnegan really in the wars in heat one. Good effort there by Ellery too, come from 20th up to 14th. Darren Pate, 17, Paul Romano, 18. And a 19 and Trat top privateer in 20. I'll say in trouble on heat one as well. Rod Nash, Mal Rose up there too. Chris Smirt. Steve Reed back in 25. Greg Crick 26. Paul Wheel 27. And Peter Dulman 28. Getting back toward this huge field now. Kevin Heffern and Danny Osborne. Mick Donaher. And right at the back, Gary Quartley, Melinda Price. All right, we're getting set for a start. A little bit of an added extra here. We're going to have Russell Ingalls' telemetry on screen, brought to you by Triple M. This will show you how it is at the start of a race rather than during the race. We'll hold it up for a, uh, a short time, just to the first corner, to see what happens on the line, off the line, and down into turn one, where it is so frantic. We saw plenty of action there. This will uh, this should be interesting, Murph. Yeah, will be. We'll see how Russell holds the RPM on the car, and uh, and also when he gets away, what he does with that RPM. There we are raising the revs now, bringing him up. Some of the guys already on the limit. There goes Russell, and he is nearly on the run. He's not on the rev limit. A six five, seven. Now he's on the limiter. Seven five, and away he goes. Great start too. Great start. Look at that rocket fly. Jason Bagwana on the grass. John Bauer slotted the second two. Jason Bargwana, he'll be disappointed with that. He lost a lot of positions. There's carnage in the first turn. It looked like Tander, I think. Uh, Tander went off. Bargwana was. Yeah, you can see him in the wars off the line. Managed to get back on the tarmac, but he spun around again trying after to, turn one. Trying to muscle his way through, and it just didn't work. So close competitive stuff. We're only a few hundred metres into heat, too. And look at them all over the back of each other. Russell Engel, you can see that. On the onboard Triple M telemetry, holding on the rev limiter, bang, dropping the clutch, and a great start too. Very important around Winton Motor Raceway. Bow in second, then we go back. Larry Perkins, Craig Lowndes sitting in the fourth. It looked like Dick Johnson has already got past Stephen Johnson back in ninth or tenth position. Here they come now. Lowndes right on Larry Perkins. Well, we'll see if there's a payback here in this race <laughs> for race one. I think not. I think uh, Craig's just quite happy to get the points here and then go as competitive and as close to the front as he possibly can. We've got some smoke coming off a car. Someone's got a tyre rubbing somewhere. Steve Johnson, by the looks of things. There's Glenn Seaton. Did a quick engine change. 48 minutes it took Scotty Owen, Tony Murphy and the crew to slot that new engine in. He was Good struggling effort. in heat one, wasn't he? Right back in 11th place. He couldn't make a dent in the top 10. So maybe the boy's lacking a bit of grunt. Have a look at this field. 36 cars streaming their way around this three kilometer just got a quick shot there of Bargwana he is right at the back of the pack so uh, a lot of work to do from him there Scape sits in fifth position ahead of Longhurst and we've got Bright, Dick Johnson, Steve Johnson and Glenn Seaton that is your top ten Romano on the inside of Tander Boy, Mark Larkin going to follow through it's going to be tight here oh, and he's just contact he's going too. around Tander oh oh Larkin got sandwiched. Nowhere to go. Completely airborne. All four wheels off the ground as he got the squeeze between oh. those two cars. Boy, oh boy. That's Larkham uh, right at the back of the pack. Look, he's carrying a lot of dirt that's been scooped up in the front spoiler. I wouldn't be surprised if that car's pretty damaged yeah. underneath, Greg. The steering, the steering especially, I think, might yeah. have been damaged in that one. I mean, Tanda sort of closed the gap, didn't give enough room, and really, 
Ooh, that's a hard one to call again, but um, he had nowhere to go then. He saw the Commodore coming back in front of him. Nowhere, and Cruncho. Oh. Terry Finnegan on the outside of them both. Did get airborne too. That ripple strip helped that, didn't it? Yep. All of Here's a different angle. Real domino effect, wasn't it? You watch when yep. Larkham, he goes off to the other side. And there's Finnegan coming around and oof, now oof, Finnegan gets Right it. off the ground. The whole thing jumped right off the ground. Anthony Tratt lucky to squeeze through that and he damaged there too. But Larkham's car, that took a pretty hard hit. Anthony Tratt did well to avoid it. He went right around the outside as well as we get back to it. Here's Larry Perkins who sits in third position at the moment. Oh, I heard something there. Sounded like some pretty big contact. He's not third any longer. Lowndes is through into third. He is too. He's back in fourth. Now Scape is here right on Perkins' hammer. Then Longhurst Bright is the next one to come through ahead of Dick Johnson, Steve Johnson and Glenn Seaton. It is very tight. Five. Look at this freight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> back through ten. What a traffic jam. Look at the smoke belching from the back of Larry Perkins' car. The no Look at the damage contact. on the rear right behind yeah, the back wheel. Yeah, I think I caught a bit of a glimpse there. He's got a fair big dent in the, in the rear, right rear of that car. So, you know, I think Lowndes and uh, Perkins may have come together there at some stage. So as this big traffic jam sorts itself out, the order is Ingle Bow. They're the cars on screen right now. Lowndes and a watching brief in third. And we're watching John Bow's feet. This is a great view of what happens. See, he's not using the clutch either, Mark. Right, and up changing. He's just backing off the throttle, putting it through a gear. So it's different to what we've seen in the past. Straight up, just back off the throttle, straight through the gearbox. And on, on the down changing, he's using the clutch. All right, big down, big rev on the throttle, down three gears at once, or two gears. He's all over the back of Russell this time, which is a bit of a surprise I expected to see Russell pull away. Well, Russell was saying in number one that his tyres didn't come on until late. JV said he was having big problems with uh, the setup of his car. He said he was very happy to get second the way it was, but he's all over the back of Ingle this time and round. And Craig Lance, he's arrowing straight in behind these two as well. So, you know, he's looking pretty good at the stage. The Commodore is looking very sharp. This is Graham Proto on board camera looking out the back of our race leader, Russell Ingle, with John Bow applying the pressure. Lowndes now closes right up on the back of the shell forwards. That's the order. One, two, three. You've got Perkins back in fourth. Then Scape, Longhurst, Bright. The two Johnsons, Dick in front of Steve and Seaton back in 10th position. Well, that Mobile One Commodore has pulled in about, I don't know, 50 or 60 metres in the matter of easily, half a lap. It's amazing how much he's caught up. So I don't know what's going on here, but Russell's definitely not pulling out or making an impression there. It's uh, Well, that was a slow strange. one around there. 126.39 for Ingle. Bow Very slow. Much quicker, yeah. And, and look at Lowndes. Lowndes was the quickest Over half a second round. quicker than Bow. So maybe a slow lap there for Russell. We'll monitor his progress. Doesn't look like the car is outwardly in any trouble. No. For someone who has never driven at this circuit before, Craig Lowndes has taken to it quite nicely. Here he is, he sits in third spot at the moment. We're looking at the Shell Helix camera, the back of John Bow's car. This is on the new part of the circuit. It's a big up and back mission, if you like, big U-shaped section. Now they're coming towards the old section. This is quite an impressive performance from Lowndes in these opening laps, Greg. We know we were down there in the pits after heat one. A lot of the Bridgestone tyre runners weren't happy with the the rubber, they couldn't get it to work properly for them, but uh, the car looks pretty competitive here. At the moment, it looks very... Oh, oh. Seaton's off! Oh, his bad luck continues. He's not having a good year in 1998, our reigning champ. And the face sort of says it all, but... Oh, not a good run. Seto's not having a good run at all. He was going all right, sitting in 10th position behind the two Johnsons. But uh, as he comes through the Motorsport S's now, we'll pick up as he goes across the start-finish line, we'll be able to pick up where he goes as our computer timing here's the replay oh just traffic locked. jam going into that corner they're all fighting for the same bit of road and uh it's it like was just up the rear brakes nothing to happen it did look like it here we go there's nothing down the inside no room at all should see some smoke in a minute there we go wow so oh, oh look at that how did he miss stephen johnson how did steve miss him Oh, how close was that? Now something's happened there because on our timing monitor, Stephen Johnson has disappeared. He's way back in 12th now. Bright is in 8th, John Faulkner is 9th, and Stephen Ellery is up into 10th. So that's great stuff for Ellery. Well, what judging run. by that, I guess uh, Stephen must have taken some evasive action. Yeah. And dropped a few positions, avoiding Seaton, and uh, that's putting down the order. But Ingle, he's not pumping it out of a bow. He's hanging it right behind him in this battle for the lead. Just half a second between Ingle and Bow Lounge sitting back there in third position still. Sort of consolidated those three too. The gaps have sort of uh, opened up a little bit, but just remain constant. So no one's making any impression in, at this stage. Middle of the top ten, things haven't changed. Scape is still fifth, Longhurst sixth. 
There is Craig Lowndes who sits third in the Mobile One HRT Commodore. There's your two up front, Bow and Engel, as it was in race one. Well, Lowndes is doing an impressive job here. We saw this at Lakeside too, where the car really wasn't the fastest thing on the track, but he gets out there and he keeps passing up these points. Oh, we had a big skid there. One of the cars coming off. Just beyond our commentary box, there it is, the Wins Commodore. Another Wins Commodore. There's Darren Pate. Darren Pate it is, yeah. Oh, he's just not having a good run. Oh. And it's not coming out of there in a hurry. He's trying to drive it out of the sand. That's only going to... Uh, he'll be stuck now. He's yeah. not going to go anywhere. Which is actually in a reasonably sort of precarious position as well. Just on the outside of turn one. Turn one. We've seen a bit of action happen there. So it is Inglebow, Lounge, Perkins, Scaife, Longhurst, Dick Johnson, Wright and Faulkner. Ellery still in your top ten also. Replay of Pank just spinning off. What do you make of that, Murph? I think he's gone in a little bit hot. He was behind his teammate too, so hopefully he wasn't trying to do anything desperate. We had a, had a big squeal of rubber there, yeah. didn't we? I think he's gone in a bit hard, obviously, and locked up the brakes. Around he's gone. So there's that shot from our cherry picker way above Winton. Shows the order. Russell Engel defending with John Bow. John Bow, you can see him working away on the wheel. We're working very hard the in times, the shell forward. The times there, like, absolutely identical, nearly nine hundredths of a ten of a second. I mean, that's pretty Boys, aren't they? Very well. Bridgestone will uh, have got a bit of work to do. They've proven to be a bit of a handful in the last Some few races. On board telemetry from the Shell Falcon, John Bow. As he tries to find a way past Russell Ingle, our race leader. There you are, John Bow. Just received word that uh, Steve Johnson is just cruising around, heading towards the pits, is the word we get. So uh, whether he sustained some damage out there, Mark. Yeah, it could well have done. It may have been in that incident where uh, Glenn Seaton had his spin and didn't see Stephen coming through, so may have done some damage to the car. We'll find out after. Meanwhile, this is a great battle here between Mark Scaife, Tony Longhurst, Look at Longhurst Johnson. out the window. He's yeah. waving his hand out the window. And Dick, and Dick Johnson putting on a great display. He's really showing some turn of speed this weekend. Well, Tony was pretty pumped up after the heat one. <laughs> he said, oh, Faulkner's gone. Faulkner's out oh, there right no. out in the dust. Oh, look how dry it is down here. Be, oh, I wouldn't want to be coming around that corner right now, <laughs> onto the uh, the new section. Enormous cloud of dust coming up from John Faulkner, he gets it back on the track. This battle continues between Scaife in fifth, Longhurst in sixth, Johnson in seventh. But it's bright, Faulkner, he was in ninth. But lost a few positions there the next time he comes across the start finish line. Ellery moves his way up to the top ten as well. Well, it is happening action of plenty, that is for sure. Johnson all over the back of Tony Longhurst. We'll see how it shapes up on your home motorsport right after this. Welcome back to Wind, and you're watching race two, round five, the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. Russell Ingle is well in control. The lights go on. He's letting some back markers know that he's coming on through because he's got John Bauer right on his tail and pushing him nice and hard. Lap nine of 15, the Synchrone Proto in-car camera. Look at Ingle working real hard. He won the first race. In fact, he won the round here last year and is well on the way to repeating that effort. Yeah, and he's getting pretty close to Craig Lowndes' history of wins this year. Lowndes is the, has won the most races with five. That victory in heat one's put Engel to four. So he's snapping right at the heels of Lowndes in race success as well. You can see him look down at the floor there, Greg. Are he's making an adjustment to the chassis? Yeah, just an adjustment to the roll bar, I think. Just having a look down and making a bit of a change. The tyres are changing throughout the whole race. So therefore, he's got to make adjustments to try and get the most grip out of that car for the whole time. You were saying before that the Winton's, a, Winton's a very technical circuit. What do you mean by a technical circuit? Well, it's one of those circuits that has got so many different corners on it, and you've got to apply yourself very differently to most of them, but it's, it's very hard to get such a, a clean lap around here because you're working so very, very hard and all the time. It's a, just one of those places we call technical because it is very hard to get a fast lap around. Just got a shot there. This is the whole field coming on through. There's Garth Tander. He's doing well. He's not that far out, out of the top ten at all. His teammate, Jason Barguana, has regrouped, and he's been going very well after those couple of dicey incidents early in the race. There's Glenn Seat now reigning Shell Australian Touring Car Champ. Now, Hossack is in 11th position in the Wins Commodore. That's great. Tanda and Ellery at 12th and 13th. Here's the privateers coming on through. Chris Smurden at the head of a big bunch. And that looks like Mark Larkham in there, is it? So Larko's been able to continue. It's Rod Nash. The X-Wing down the Commodore, doing a great job. 
There's a huge bunch of cows here. I'd say Mark would be uh, really struggling now with that incident uh, in the early lap. It uh, did some damage maybe to the wheel alignment of the car, whatever, doesn't seem to be running too quickly. Well, as you can see on screen there, there's a phone number for you to call the Northern Territory Holiday Centre. We are heading to the Territory in July. July 19 will be the second last round of this year's Shell Championship. It's the first time we've been to the Territory, and if you're thinking about heading up, call 1-800-621-336 and start organising your holiday, your trip right now. A lot of people from the Southern States are heading up there. There's a lot of excited people at the top end, and it should be great. Well, you can't get much closer than this, guys. Bowie is still giving Russell a real hard time. And Falcon showing a lot of speed today, especially the second race. Through the Motorsport S as they come. Well, we were talking before when it was the other way around when John Bow was in front, whether Russell would be able to get past. I don't think Russell's going to let JB pass. It should be pretty tough, all right. Syndrome on board camera. Looking out the window of Ingalls' car. That's what he's seeing in his rear view mirror. Lights on. John Bow breathing right down his neck. He's only got to make the slightest mistake. Bow will be in there. The type of place, this is the type of place, if you make one little mistake, as I think uh, one of the jobbers was saying the other, the other day, it can upset so many more of the corners. You have to be <laughs> right on. It's so tight and each corner is so close to one another. You make one mistake, you get out of line, it's going to cost you dearly for the next corner. You know when Russell Lingle made the move on John Bow in race one? Exactly what you were just saying then, Greg. Russell said, I saw John and he got a little out of shape. He, he was going in there with a nice slide and he said, I'm in. And it's right. my chance. Open yeah. the gap. Yeah, open the gap and I'm through. That's it. And JB said, I couldn't do anything about it. I'm just trying to gather it all up. See, look at Russell now. He's guarding the inside line. Yeah. JB doesn't have the speed to be able to get up alongside or create a move there. But he'll try and double up now. Force Russell narrow. Then look for them. Obviously not enough room. Oh, do it. oh, oh, oh he made his show. Oh, oh, oh. Well, well, I was just going to say, you were looking at absolute pressure driving there. One little mistake, <laughs> and Bow would be in there. Look at that angle. Just, he just went a little bit too hot into that corner. I don't think he touched him either. I think no. it was just uh, no. Russell just overcooked it. Like we saw Jason Mark one or Jason yeah. Bright in the yeah. first race. He will not be happy with himself. Well, three laps remaining, and wow. he will be kicking himself. JB, that was full on pressure. Well, Russell didn't let JB pass, did he? <laughs> JB forced him to pass. There's your fastest Excellent. laps from the race, only in two hundredths of a second between Bow and Russell Lingle all the way so far. <laughs> yeah, Russell running over the curbs here, the shutter from underneath the car. Now we've got a bit of lap traffic coming up here. This may be another opportunity for Ingle and Bow manages to get caught up in this. It's Peter Dolman. Peter Dolman. Yeah, the Please move out. Of, oh, now JB's been caught. You can't go around the outside. Russell will. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, JB, where are you going? Whoa. Gives Pete a bit of a shame on the rear bumper. Time yeah. to get out of the way, son. I've got someone breathing right down my neck. Here he comes. Down the back straight once again. Ingle looking for any opportunity. Lights on on both cars. Absolute maximum pressure driving. Through this tight left hander, John Bow is looking good, but here comes Russell Ingle. He's on the way back. He's not happy. Lap 13 of 15. Still time to do it. And Shell Helix Ford looks very good at the moment. Very balanced. JB will be very happy with the car. And I don't think Russell is going to be able to do anything about it. Well, they made quite a few changes from race one to now. As John Bow said he was struggling big time in race one. There is your privateer situation. Chris Murden leads that way as we're looking at our overall race lead. Bow is looking comfortable. He's got a nice little buffer there. Both these Fords, uh, to, uh, both the Shell Falcons doing very well. And Dick Johnson sent the fastest lap of that that last lap around as well so he's going very quick obviously just a little bit further back in the pack the really good part about this though i mean you can talk about the falcon and the commodore as a, as a race package but the, what the, the strength that john is finding now is the relationship that he's built up with lee guy his chief engineer they really feel like they're starting to understand the car and the communication between them is so good that they find they're just tuning it right up to its maximum you listen to john's throttle control through that section of the of the track there the fast sweeper it's a very, very tricky corner. You've just got to keep that car so balanced. Otherwise, you really make a mess of it. You can upset the head and afterwards. And it, uh, you can hear him just on and off the throttle, keeping the car as balanced as possible. It's been a few years since JB's had a win here at Winton. 1995 was his last win when he won both races that year before the three-race format came in. This is actually, I mean, he's really showing a bit of dominance here. Yeah, that's uh, really impressive. We haven't seen that for a while. Down this long straight. This is part of the new section of the winter circuit. Craig Lowndes there. He has to tackle the traffic now. Larry Perkins in behind him. That scape is still handling the pressure very well from Longhurst. And in behind him, Dick Johnson. 
who has had a great race right from the start when he worked his way past his son Stephen very early on and has been charging real hard. He is in seventh position at the moment. Paul Romano, we've got to give Romano a plug. He's in eighth. That's an outstanding effort. Ahead of Jason Bright and John Walker in ten. It's another great result for Romano. He's doing a great job, Paul. Last lap for our race leader, John Bauer. Boy, if he can make a points haul here this afternoon, that's going to be very important to his championship position. Keep in mind, Bauer sitting back in fifth position when he came into this round. Craig Lowndes, Russell Engel, Larry Perkins and Mark Scave ahead of him. So if he can capitalise on this day of winter, it's going to make a big difference to his championship position. Well, for how many years has JB been consistent and always challenging for the top three in the championship? The guy just knows how to win, doesn't he? Just keeps piling up those points. This is on board with Dick Johnson at the moment around the top end of the circuit. He's coming up on... Oh, look at the ball, Mist. He's making the most of their track. Fantastic battle between yeah. Mark Scape in fifth, Longhurst in sixth. They're riding with Dick. He's got Paul Romano, Jason Bright and Faulkner behind him. Traffic jams up and down through the circuit. Look at, look at Tony Longhurst. He's really pumped. He's enjoying his day's racing. We saw him speaking with Mark Osler earlier. He's loving it. He said that this is so action packed. Someone's oh. gone. Bush, back on. Who was that? Can't quite see because of the dust just yet. I think it's one of our Simon Imazidis, it is, in the Simon Zerbergs car. Great work, Lowndes hung on for third. And Larry Perkins was back there in fourth. There's Romano coming across the line. Paul Romano, well done. Eighth spot. A great top ten finish. Another really good result was Garth Tander in the Valvoline Commodore. He came in in 13th position. And that's only his second ever V8 supercar round so a great effort by him but this man is the number one at the moment john bow in the shell helix ford he picks up the win he's first since 95 ahead of russell engel it was a tight battle lounge perkins and skate we have a look next tony longhurst and dick johnson that battle went on for a long time romano bright and faulkner rounding out the top 10.